That need to be our heart desire. Amen. Hallelujah. We did not come to visit some man or somebody here. Amen. We came to have the visitation of our God Almighty. That will be a greater touch of God. Amen. Even though we are a spiritual family, but we want God to touch us today. Hallelujah. Let that be our prayer. Let that be a heart desire. Let that be a hunger and thirst today in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we all look unto God this morning? Amen. Can you all open your mouth and pray with me, please? Welcome the presence of God. Ask God to come down and touch you. Hallelujah. If anything that is hindering you to reach out to God, just confess before Him. Let let him cleanse you. Hallelujah. Let him wash you. Let him make you perfect before him. Hallelujah. Mighty God. We worship you, Daddy. Come on, open your mouth and talk to the King of King and the Lord of Law. Hallelujah. Let him reign over you. Let him release his glory, his anointing upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. God, my Father, we worship you, Daddy. We honor you, God, my Lord. We declare that, God, my Lord, you are the greatest of greatest. You are the mighty of mighty. You are the great I am that I am, my God, my Lord, my God. We pray that, God, your greater visitation will happen today. Your greater touch will happen today. The power of God Almighty that will come down in a greater and a higher level, my God, my Father, never like before. We want a new manna today, my God, my Lord. A new glory today, my God, my Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Prepare each one of us, your God, my Lord. Let the altar be prepared by your glory, my God, my Father. If anything that is hindering your God, your people, I I ask you to cleanse them by your holy blood, you God, my Lord. In the name that is the name of all names. The power of all power, you God, my Father. Blessed be your holy name. I surrender every single area of the service today. I ask you to bless it, you God. Anoint it, you God, with your power and authority in the name of Jesus. Use your servant so gloriously. Father, we love you, God. We worship you. We come against every plan and work of the devil. Every power and principality. May Stand against today's service. We rebuke and bind and demolish them, my God, in the heavenly realm. Every agency of the devil will be destroyed, O God, my Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Rise up the mighty testimonies, O God. Mighty hands of God will come down and He will do a mighty miracle, O God, my Father. We surrender everything in your blessed hand. Thank you for the new souls you are adding today in our midst, O God, my Father. We give all the glory and honor to you and you alone, my God. In Jesus' name we ask this prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Come and give a clap for the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, it says, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto the mountain, Remove hence unto yonder place, and it shall be moved, and nothing shall stand impossible unto you. Amen. Today we believe that our Savior, that He can move mountains. He's able to move every single mountain, every single obstacle that's in our way from reaching Him today. So let's sing this song today and sing, Savior, you can move the mountains. That through your power, we are able to move mountains. He has given us the power to move mountains today. And let's just Amen. sing that and proclaim that today. Oh, Amen. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Savior, you can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save, forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave, and Savior, He can move the mountains, and my God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to 
save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Altar of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. We're just gonna sing this song again because this song is so powerful. Just if you know the meaning of this song, you will sing out to our God. You will sing out to our God. Today, let's not just sing this song as a familiar song we always sing in this church, but let's sing this song as a declaration to God that He is mighty to save. He has saved us from every single situation. He has picked us up from the miry clay. Oh Jesus, you are so mighty to save. Oh, so mighty to save. We're just going to sing this song a little bit faster. A little bit faster. Let's just bring a little step into our feet. Let's just sing this song a bit faster and praise the Master of Jesus. Amen. Jesus and Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And Savior, He can move the mountains. Our God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine a light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. And Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave, and Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, and he is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. 
Jesus conquered the grave. Oh, Jesus, you've conquered the grave, Jesus. Oh, you have conquered the grave, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. You know, today I was going to sing the song, Hosanna, Praise is Rising, but as I was standing here, God was putting in my heart that we should sing the song, I am trading my sorrows. That there's some sorrows that need to be traded this morning. There's some things that need to be traded in for the joy of the Lord. So we're going to sing this song today, and we're going to dance, we're going to sing, we're going to shout, because there's something that needs to be traded in for joy today. There's something that needs to be traded in today. Let's sing this song. Amen. We're going to sing this in the key of D. Amen. Yes, Jesus, we thank you. Jesus Amen Amen Jesus Just begin to clap your hands for Jesus Just begin to clap Amen Jesus He's able to do all things He's able to do all things Don't listen to the music But focus on God this morning We are able to trade every single sorrow for the joy of the Lord. Amen. He has given us joy this morning. Joy in abundance. Amen. And I'm trading my sorrow. And I'm trading my shame. And I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. And I'm trading my sorrow, and I'm trading my shame, and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain. Shame. Shame. And I'm laying down. 
God's will. Yes to God's way, Jesus. We say yes to everything, Jesus. We say yes. Oh, riba baba shanta da baba. Oh, santa da baba baba shanta da baba. Oh, santa da baba baba shanta da baba. Oh, riba baba baba shanta da baba. Oh, shanta da baba. We say yes, Jesus. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. We say yes to your calling, Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we say yes. We say yes. Just begin to rise up your song. We are not dead today. Just say yes to that. Yes, we are not dead. Yes, we are alive. Yes, we are strong. Yes, we are healthy. Oh, Jesus, we say yes to everything, Jesus. Yes, to your will, Jesus. Oh, Santa Baba Baba Santa Baba. Oh, praise is rising in the atmosphere. Oh, praise is rising. Praise is rising. Oh shantara ba 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 Oh sintara ba 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 shotorobo Oh sintara ba you are faithful Jesus faithful all our days Jesus Oh santara ba 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 Jesus Oh we praise you Jesus Yeah. 
Welcome the Lord into our hearts. Welcome the Lord into your hearts this morning. He wants to, he's knocking at the door of your hearts to come in. Just welcome him today. Oh Jesus, we welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you, Jesus. Oh, the more we seek you, the more we find you. The more we find you, the more we love you, Jesus. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Take your place, take your place. Have your way, have your way, Jesus. Oh, we need you more, we need you more. How great you are, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. How many of you want to seek God today? Seek God from the depths of your heart. Seek God truly. When you seek him, you will find him. And the more you find him, the more you will love him. You will fall in love with God. That you will just want to sit at his feet. That you just want to drink from the cup that's overflowing in his hands. The cup that's overflowing in blessings. Jesus. The more I seek you. The more I find you the more I find you oh Lord the more I love you the more I seek you the more I seek you the more I find you 
drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hand. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. And this love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. And this love is so deep. It's more than I can say. I melt in your peace. It's overwhelming, oh Lord, it's overwhelming, it's overwhelming, overwhelming, it's overwhelming, it's overwhelming. How great is thy God, you're the name above all names, and you are worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing Hallelujah. how great is I God? You're the name above all names, and you are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is I God. God, my and here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You are all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, my God. You are all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin 
taking our oh, sickness God, of the Lord, my Lord God. God. So here I am, my God. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You are all together and lovely and all together worthy. All together worthy for to me. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say. That's the wise of God, my Lord. Here I am. And here Father, I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You are all together lonely and all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Can we say one more time, my God, my Lord? Yes. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. Father, we pour out to you, God, my Lord. King of kings, we love you, God. My God. You are all together. Come on with the music now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God, my Father. Wonderful to me. Yes, to God, here I am. Here I am to worship. Cross for you are all together lovely, oh all God, together we worthy. We worship you, we worship you. all we together wonderful to me. So here I am, I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you are my God. You are all Do you believe that he is altogether wonderful to you? Hallelujah. Do you believe that in every way, from the morning until the evening, from the night until the morning, that he is altogether amen, wonderful to you? Amen. If you can think that, give a best clap for the Lord and best praises to the Lord. Open your mouth and declare that he is worthy. He is altogether. He is wonderful to us. Hallelujah. Even you walk in the midst of the fire, that God Almighty is with you. Even you walk in the home and the water, he has promised that he will be with you. Every storm and the wind that is sitting in your life, God will have you pull that down. Hallelujah. Come on, declare the glory of God. Worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, to God, my Father. We just put on your feet and we worship you, Daddy. We honor you, God, my Father. We declare that you are worthy of all the praise. You're the greatest of greatest. You're the mighty of mighty, O God. You're the excellency of excellency. All in your name, every knee shall bow. All time will confirm that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. We declare your glory, my God, my Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bakala Balandi, Bakala Balandi. Bless of your holy name, my God, my King. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God, my Father. Let us surrender this morning into the hands of God. That let's remember this nation we live. Hallelujah. As we pray every Sunday, that God's touching will be upon Ireland. Hallelujah. Not only we will experience the kingdom of God, the people out there, hallelujah, they will experience the same salvation. The same joy we are having it, hallelujah. The same hope we are having it, hallelujah. 
it is very important for us to pray hallelujah for the nation we live amen let us pray this morning hallelujah amen somebody lead in prayer please go over urge by the holy spirit thank you jesus hallelujah we worship you god almighty amen daddy my god jesus hallelujah amen daddy jesus amen yes god jesus amen god my father oh daddy yes my god my king hallelujah blessed be your holy name jesus Amen, God, my Father. Yes, my God Almighty. Alleluia. Yes, mighty God. Alleluia, mighty God, my Father. Amen. Jesus, my God. Yes, we stand in the power and the blood of Jesus, my God. Yes. power my god in the name of jesus my god oh father bring that glory of god my father jesus my lord god oh daddy my god hallelujah yes amen oh as we are praying here daddy you are able to do it you are the savior of this world amen oh god Thank you Jesus. Amen. Mighty God my father. Oh hallelujah. Yes. Thank you Jesus. Yes my God my father. Ma kala balandira. Yes. In the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah my God. Thank you Jesus. Makala baba landi. Usada la baba kala mama landi ra mama kala balandi. Ira bakala balandi. Yes my God my Lord. Hallelujah my Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Oh must you God my father thank you Jesus hallelujah my god my king thank you Jesus hallelujah my god amen glory hallelujah my god Jesus amen oh god yes my god oh daddy amen Glory. Yes, my God Almighty. Jesus, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah, mighty God, my Father. Glory, God. Jesus. Hallelujah, my God. Amen. Praise you God. Jesus. Hallelujah my God almighty. Amen oh God almighty God. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah my God my father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you Jesus. Amen daddy my God. Jesus my God. Praise you. Amen oh God my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you Lord in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give a clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated now. Oh God is good all the time. Amen. Good to see you all. Hallelujah. Amen. 
you can touch your neighbor and tell give a nice smile and tell good to see you in the house of god hallelujah the best smile you can do that amen praise god hallelujah if you cannot smile in the house of god where else you can smile you know <laughs> amen praise god blessed be his holy name so this is a time of uh, testimony um let's do it quick because we got uh, two um our guest preacher is there at the same time we got a team from fro life fro life um, they're here um shall we put our hands to welcome them amen hallelujah they took their time and they came today as we have been praying since uh, some sundays in here and it's good to receive some update you know what they are doing and how the country is moving forward amen so that will help us to pray more vigilantly you know in that particular area so this is a time of testimony if anybody have anything just share short and sweet amen i would like to give about 5 minutes for the testimony amen um i was recently praying for the and um, you know i ha- i i was lord put a burden on my heart to pray for the nations you know uh, it's a kind of intercessory prayer intercessory prayer i used to pray in the last 6 months and uh, god was so good to me he answered me in every prayers that i Amen. prayed yes whenever he prays me he he gives me an answer for my prayers he comes to me with a mighty power and he he tells me that look i'm answering your prayers it could be a phone call and he comes to me with the mighty power and he said here is the answer for your prayers like that Amen. and uh, so i used to uh, cry and pray and even in uh, during my break time in my work i go and pray with Hallelujah. tears Hallelujah. it's Amen. all about the revival in the end times yes. you know Amen. it's for the christians we have to lord make them strong to fight Amen. for you in the end times you know yes. to Amen. make to use in your hands like that that kind of prayer Amen. so when i pray like that i used to um, uh, pray for my protection every time when i leave my house i used to kneel down and pray like 2 minutes lord protect me from the evil because the evil is after you every time to attack you so i used to pray and god was so good to me every time Amen. and um, that day one of that day i forgot to pray i was rushing to my work and uh, i usually get the uh, luas from one stop but i had to go to another stop that day so um i i really was thinking i was i used to think a lot in my um, head you know i used to be thinking a lot there's so much going on in my head but when i come to the in traffic lights i used to be careful but so that day i was thinking in my mind that lord i'm careful when i'm coming to the traffic lights i'm because i'm very careful you know i'm i'm having the presence of mind thank you lord for this i was telling to my mind and i was trying to cross and i crossed the traffic lights and i i, I have to go i have to cross the uh, tram trams as well but i looked before i crossed the tra- traffic lights and then i was crossing the tra- lewis track but I, as soon as i uh, uh, crossed the tra- lewis track and i just stood beside i i felt there some strong wind passing by strong wind that's all i felt and like i looked beside me the luas is passing by oh, like within a second hallelujah. you know i was like saved Amen. god saved me from that accident yes, hallelujah. you know i thought i was careless careful but still i missed Amen. you know it was a very um, um, it's it's a full of lights there you know yes. you can't see that luas is coming it's coming from a bend actually so you can't really see so that was a great miracle Amen. before i after i left the house i was praying into my mind lord you go before me you yes. you level my you, you know the lord will go before you and he level the mountains you Amen. know like that prayer i prayed Jesus. him you know the isaiah 45 2 i said the word and i prayed and he really saved me Amen. you know he was so good you know when you pray he listens yes. he listens where whatever you say wherever you go he's he's after you he's watching over oh, you man. and then man. another thing Hallelujah. thank you lord and oh. another thing last week um saturday um i have a landlord he's irish he's a good person we, we are three girls living in that house so um he, i used to tell him word of god you know to re- to read bible because you're a good person like that and there are there, there are two other pentecostal girls as well so then the, he had a stroke that night saturday night uh, he had very full weakness of his arm right arm so um that night you know i couldn't pray i was going to work 
Then I told him at 11 o'clock, I told him, I'll pray for you, for your quick recovery, so that you will know that the Jesus is a divine healer. I told him like that. And I, I prayed. I didn't even get a break that night. And I was praying, sitting in a corner of the ward. And I, I bind the spirit, and I put the Jesus blood on his arm, and I was oh, praying. Man. And uh, in 11 hours' time, he texted me saying that, you know, he, he couldn't pick up the coins uh, at 12 o'clock in the uh, midnight, but about 1 o'clock he texted me saying that I can 60 percentage um, recovery I feel. Amen. Like Hallelujah. Yes. Thank God Hallelujah. for that. He, Amen. The power and then of this fr Friday he's telling me he can use the um, dough, the, you know, the play dough. He can make something out of it with his Amen. hand, you know. Praise he's, God. you know, he was telling, thank you, Hilda, Amen. for all your praise. Like Amen. that, you know, he's answering the prayers, you Hallelujah. know. If not you and me, nobody's there for Lord. Yes. For devil, there are millions out there, you know. Amen. You know, we have to be strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come Amen. on, give a clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> thank God for the burden of prayer upon our sister. Amen. There's things we need to learn. And thank God for the protection from the accident of the Lewis. God is watch, watching over us. Amen. Anyone else? The Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I just want to thank God because last Sunday I went to the pastor for prayer and he said to me that there's an application that I was late to apply for but God is going to like make a way for me to be chosen out of everybody. And a few days before that, the school called home and because being the next year you have to um, apply but I forgot to apply for it so when I went to talk to the teacher he told me that that I was too late to apply so my my place can be given to somebody else or else I have to go somewhere else but then like um, two days after that I got a text from the school saying that I've been accepted into the hallelujah year. amen amen God is good amen as God has revealed through the servant of God, you know. So exactly it has happened. Amen. Thank God for that. Any other testimonies? Okay. Sleep. When he came and he He's not usually interested about anything concerning the church. Many members always come to me, oh, why is he like this? He always feels like he doesn't want to be here. So I don't know, yesterday something happened, and uh, I, I see it as a big breakthrough. Hallelujah. The good thing that they say are going to happen to me, I started already with my children and everything. So as I was resting yesterday, because I knew about the chain prayer, I needed to rest before my time. And uh, he, came, he came and he on the light in my room. I said, well, why are you waking me up? He just, just, he just stay around and he said, mommy, oh, this song was so beautiful today in the church. I look at my son. Like to say, is it what you want to talk about? Waking me up for that. And he said, what is that first song again? I look at him, I was like, under the duvet. That first song, mommy, you have to remember. I started just going through my head. I just gave, I want more of you. He said, no, not that one. I say, okay. Uh, um, I got it in my mind. He said, yes, 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 it's the one. He started singing it, singing it. He said, mommy, I will not be born anymore. I want to be going. I will be there all the time in the church. Oh, Amen. Sister Michelle, I thank God for her life. I thank God for all the things that is happening. Because now, you know, I, did, I didn't usually, I don't like going to prayer and fasting because it's too long. Now, I didn't even remember how long we stayed there. Amen. Because before I know, we were finished. I still want to be there. I look at my son. Before I knew, he just jumped on top of me. On top of the bed, he still want to talk more about the church. I said, God, is this what you can do? Waking me up to talk about church. Hallelujah. My son of all my, of Amen. all this, among all the children. So I give praise to God. Hallelujah. Because it's a Blessed big breakthrough. I thank God for Amen. everything. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Let's move forward into the announcement area. I thank God for all the testimonies. I know that there might be more, but... Uh, because of the time we need to move forward. So <clears throat> looking at the, the weekdays uh, schedule that Monday our house prayer will be in Sister Glory George is in Inchicore. That's at 7 p.m. Then Tuesday we'll have a, a special meeting in here by Pastor Vikram and his wife. Uh, they will be with us on Tuesday evening at 6.30. We'll have our meeting. 
uh, in, in the church. So I encourage the, the entire church to uh, come and attend the meeting. It will be a greater blessing. We thought of having a special meeting tomorrow, the full day, but I, I thought it is a bank holiday. Unfortunately, it is not, so we need to cancel that. And Thursday, we have the full day from 11 to 4 o'clock. We got a youth meeting here with Pastor Vikram and his wife. They will be conducting the full day youth meeting. So I encourage all the youth about 12 that you need to attend that. And if you know some of the, your friends or neighbors, those who are the youth, you can bring them also. They're more than welcome. We'll provide the lunch and all that is required that day. It will be met by the church. Amen. And again, Friday evening, we'll have a special meeting with Pastor Vikram uh, from 6.30. They'll be ministering with us on Friday evening. And as this is the last third Saturday of the month, and we have, what, what we have? Oration Shine. Oration Shine. So this Saturday will be our Oration Shine, the children's full day program. That will be from 9.30 to 2.30. So... All the children and uh, your friends, uh, we normally get about 80 to 90 children, they come. So keep that in prayer and let's reach out more. And that's a glorious day. God is doing amazing things in our midst. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be his holy name. Thank God. Now we're going to take our offering for the blessing of the kingdom of God. Let's give unto the Lord what is belongs to God Almighty. And then after that, the fro life, they will you the presentation um, then Pastor Vikram will be ministering to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be Solid. Amen. for the offering. Father, we declare your glory, Lord my God. Thank you for giving us a grace that we could be good able to worship you in truth and spirit of God, my Father. Thank you, Lord, for blessing your people, God, my Lord. And out of that, they could be able to offer unto you, Father in heaven. We release this offering into your blessed hand. We ask you to accept it, sanctify it, and use it for your glorious kingdom. As your people, they release it, God, my Lord. I ask you to bless them 
abundantly, O oh God, my Lord, that they, their hand will be blessed so abundantly and their storehouse will overflow in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, as we're going to hear it from the oh Lord God, the team from Pro Life, we ask you to, Lord, take control over and give us the Lord God much more detail that we can pray and support and stand with them for your glory. We give all the glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, we ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now it's the time. Let's welcome uh, our team to come forward and release. Come on, put your hands to welcome them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much for um, allowing us to come here. And it's been an absolute blessing to be here in the very beginning. And um, I have been to some of your churches for prayer days, particularly for women. And I know how um, strong you are in the word of God. It's just absolutely wonderful to declare the scriptures. And, uh, because, and I love the way the, the song went this morning about he can move the mountains and we certainly have a mountain to be moved in our land and I'm so touched and so grateful the way you pray for our nation it is just uh, we're blessed we're totally blessed to have you here thank God <laughs> so um, maybe the first uh, is there a, the first slide if possible yeah it's just love both um, <clears throat> I'm just going to read you a, a part of the scripture that you're very used to. Of course, it's Psalm 139, just giving God the glory through his word. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before any of them came to be. And that's so incredible to hear those words of the Lord. And um, a lot of people know that scripture. A lot of people might not know I'm sure you do here, um, James 1, 14 to 15, and I'm just putting it paraphrase. Um, you know the way temptation pulls us towards wrong desires, and when desire takes root, it gives birth to sin. So once sin is given a foothold, it's always greedy for more. And in 2013, we had a referendum, and the door to legalized abortion was opened just a little bit. We grieved desperately about that. <coughs> Sin was given a foothold and true to form, it is now looking for more and wanting that door to be opened much wider. So this year, we have this mountain to face, a referendum at the end of May, I think, and that will allow, if it goes through, the door to be opened wider. And the evidence is there all over. If you look at other countries, that today have fully legalized abortion on demand, it began with opening the door just a little bit. That's why I'm here representing pro-life campaign with my colleague Anita, and she'll say a few words at, near the end. And um, asking for help really, and I hear it's already happening, and of course prayer is number one, but we have to go into action as well. And so we um, are asking today, maybe you could be involved in some way. And I'll explain a little bit as we go along. So maybe um, the next one. Simply communicating the pro-life message and getting involved today. Sadly, and not too surprisingly, it seems that the media are much on the side of pro-abortion people. And this means that the pro-life message is being blocked and not heard. But what can we do about this? That, in a way, is no problem to the Lord. So prayer is so powerful. But we in pro-life have discovered a method which is already in progress, sorry, um, uh, and already making a big difference. And we believe it could actually um, change the referendum, change the result of the referendum. And it's called canvassing. And which is simply talking to people on the street. And when you become a little bit more experienced and no fear, knocking on doors. Um, but I'll explain a little bit more of that as we go along. And the next one. Thank you. 
sorry, just read what's on the screen. Patience. So who we are. We were established in 1981, so we've well established, pioneered the 1983 amendment. So the Eighth Amendment was pioneered and established by Pro-Life Campaign. So we have about 40,000 supporters and 20, or about 2,000 active volunteers. And we have strong political, medical and legal research team. So pro-life campaign, it's, it's trying to deal with the politics as well, trying to um, go on television, if you like, and be able to cope with um, debates and all that kind of thing. And there are good people in pro-life campaign to do that. And so the Eighth Amendment, the next one, <coughs> Thank you. I'll just read that out to you. Sorry, you shouldn't have these. They're kind of stuck together. Um, it says, the state, um, our country, the government, our state acknowledges, our constitution, acknowledges the right to life of the unborn and with due regard to the equal right to life of the mother guarantees in its laws to respect and as far as practicable, practicable by its laws to defend and vindicate that right. And so that right is now in great danger of being taken out <coughs> of our constitution. Um, that um, Eighth Amendment has even been recognized in internationally. And up to 2013, when the door was opened that little bit, Ireland was known and recognized internationally as a country that provided the best care to mothers and their children, and therefore one of the safest places in the world to have a baby. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because you see, our doctors, because there was no abortion allowed, our doctors have become very skilled. And we were proud of them. And in the UN, I remember somebody who's there um, saw a charter up with Ireland on the very top as being the safest place to have a baby. But that is no longer quite true. <coughs> so there, as you know, there's a serious campaign underway at present to dismantle and repeal, get rid of the Eighth Amendment out of our constitution. It's huge, hugely funded. And that could be, please, a... Uh, uh, a point for prayer. You maybe already know that, but it's been hugely funded from outside, um, and particularly a man called George Soros, S-O-R-O-S. He is a very, very wealthy billionaire and um, does not believe in God and supports uh, many things like this, but he hugely supports. He did in 2013 <coughs> and causes this kind of problem everywhere. And sadly, there are a few key people in our government, as you know, um, who are pro-life. And yes, I know, I'm sure you already pray for the ones who are standing up, and it's very difficult for them. <coughs> but we're right behind them. But um, we're convinced, even though there are few in the government, convinced from experience that out there in the country there are actually quite a large percent, percentage of people who are on the middle ground, who um, aren't too sure what way to vote, and they're the ones we're after. And also we have an actuarial report, that means an independent report done, which identified that at least 100,000 people are alive in Ireland today because of the Eighth Amendment. And it shows you how valuable it is, and how important it is that we keep it. So the next slide is just winning hearts and minds. How we communicate the message is vitally important. We want to talk to people on the middle ground who are sitting on the fence or who haven't made up their minds, but also there are people out there who just lis listen to what the media say and who just read in the papers what the media say. And uh, there is fake news out there, <laughs> it is for sure, but it is biased. It is biased. Um, everybody is pro-abortion, it would seem. Um, but there are people in country with God-honouring hearts, I believe, who we need to reach. And the best way to do that is with just balanced and moderate, never compromising, never watering down the message, yet having the right attitude and um, loving hearts and friendly hearts. So next slide, please. Thank you. And <clears throat> so we also need to be balanced, professional, resilient, able for the battle. We simply want to... Um, bring people into better understanding wherever they are. And um, last year we had a wonderful man from America came. 
this was a, a different kind of Christian conference, but he was about six foot five, a great big tall man. But I always have a picture of him as he kind of bent forward and he would talk about our approach to other people. And to you say, incline your ear. And there's so much, that's mentioned quite a lot in the Bible, to incline your ear. Just bend forward and hear where the other person is coming from and speak to them in, in a loving way, yet firm. So we want to talk to people and not at people. And... Um, Yes, we're looking just to really win hearts and minds from the middle ground in particular. So the next one is street canvas, a little bit word about that. In the past couple of months particularly, it is a growing movement and it's happening all over Ireland and we're so thankful for this. I think we didn't realise how quickly it would take off and how it would grow. You see, good training is given beforehand. So really when you think of going out in the street and maybe talking to people about pro-life, it's never just on one's own. It can be done, of course, but usually with two or three and somebody, first of all, who has experienced and, and done this before. But it really is nothing to fear. And then you might do that, and it's fun, and usually let people see you know, who you are. There, you see some of the pink up there. But um, they know straight away that it is pro-life campaign, and we're just being honest. Yes, we are, and this is what we're talking about. And it kind of it makes it much easier. Um, so, um, Anita will talk to you a little bit about that. Next one is communing the pro-life message. Uh, this one, knocking on the door, that might really scare people. But again, we have little questionnaires um, f to help w with all that. And I'll give you an example. You can t hope I'm not going on too long. Okay. An example, you know, um, you can ask people's opinion about something. You could say, um, if you had to guess, how many pregnancies would you say end in abortion in England and Wales? And you have a choice, is it 50 pregnancies, is it 20, or is it, sorry, is it 1 in 50, 1 in 20, 1 in 5? People would usually say 1 in 20, and it is actually 1 in 50. And another question could be, if you had to guess what percentage of unborn babies with Down syndrome are aborted in England and Wales, would it be 20%, 60%, or 90 percent? Um, and the answer, sadly, is 90 percent. And we know that in some countries um, it's already uh, totally banned. And just this lovely scripture, which again you are very familiar with, salt and light, Matthew 5, 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And so, uh, in canvassing, it's really just going out there. In a way, almost, you would try and talk to people about the Lord. But this is just being open and friendly and building contacts. And in doing all this, you become strong and fearless and well able for it and actually enjoying it. It's, it can be great fun. So, um, the next slide, um, just uh, street interaction. Yeah, just a little picture there of just street presence. People are getting used to seeing um, us on the street. And it's important to have, uh, be able to do this and also eventually going knocking on the doors. And so the next slide simply says, sorry, um, the time it took, this girl said, the time it took to plan an abortion in England was the time I needed to change my mind. And there are many, many like that. And also um, many personal stories, um, this little leaflet, I'll just read you one of those is just great. These are the kind of leaflets we hand out to people. And some would just never have read stories like this because on the media they're hearing just negative stuff. Um, so Shauna Prevett faced a horrendous situation when she became pregnant after rape. She, was never, she has never once regretted her decision to continue the pregnancy and today she says, I think the world would be much worse place without my little girl. Shauna is not alone. 74% of women in Ireland who become pregnant after rape do not have an abortion. These are the stories we need to hear when abortion 
for the hard cases being proposed. Rape is an unimaginable and horrendous crime. However, we do not suggest ending the life of a human being to rectify any other crime. If we are truly concerned about protecting women, we should seek stronger sentences for rapists and real justice for those who are victim of rape. And the next one. Sorry. Oh, there we are. This picture, yes, of uh, a rally. And there is another rally coming up, actually. And it's on the 10th of March, not too far away. It's, this one is organized by another pro-life organization called Life Institute, full of more good people and brave people. And so everybody takes turns really in organizing these rallies. And this is an old Ireland rally. And um, I believe God gave us the idea to do this. Um, I haven't got it for the screen, but um, I can send it by email if you want to have it, if that would be okay. And it's simply called Boots on the Ground. And it's all one voice together for the voiceless. And what we're saying as the Christian churches, you know, the Catholic Church uh, was really the one strong voice speaking out. But people, um, because of historical background, people don't trust it enough. And, you know, an awful lot of things, bad things have happened. But they are full of God-honoring people. And this is where we, the Christian churches, it's the suggestion here is that we would add our numbers to their rally and come perhaps with a, a placard with a message about um, saving the Eighth Amendment, but also who you are, like your Ministry of Jesus Church. And we're sending it all over the country, even Northern Ireland as well, who, who have stood and kept that door shut. And we're saying, come and flood the streets. And so um, I leave some of these are outside on the table. But we just sense that it was a God idea. And um, who knows, we're trusting him that it would work. And just another scripture it is so familiar with, <coughs> Proverbs 6, 17, God hates the shedding of innocent blood. And that, of course, on our whole nation, that's where we're so worried, people of prayer, I'm part of people of prayer, um, we're, we're so worried that the effect spiritually and physically this can have on our land. Thank you so much again for praying for us. And Proverbs 24 is a very key scripture that says, rescue those who are unjustly sentenced to death unjustly sentenced to death. Don't stand back and let them die. Don't try to disclaim responsibility by saying you didn't know about it. God who knows all hearts knows yours and mine and he knows we know and he will reward everyone according to his deeds. And so finally um, we're asking you to get involved and just before I go there's one last picture there. That's just, yeah, just to say the end and thank you. And please, uh, Anita, can you come up and say a little word? Oh, one last thing. I'm so sorry, but it's very important. Um, I don't know if you can see what this picture is. It's the picture of a baby's hand. Uh, just l uh, yesterday, a few of us just felt called by the Lord to go up and pray around the um, government offices just outside. But the night before, one of our godly men had this picture. He had a dream. And it was a dream of just with total darkness, but out of the darkness came this baby's hand reaching out. And I thought it was such a, a moving picture. And then he went to sleep again. And again, he had a second dream. This time, the hand was reaching out again. But it was like it was a little bit stronger. And he, in his dream, felt he was able to get hold of it and connect. And it spoke volumes to us that this darkness that is ready there. But you know, another extraordinary thing, and we were up in Marion Square yesterday, and on a Saturday, they all have paintings and everything around the square. And uh, on the square, there was a picture of a baby, of a baby with huge, big, dark arms, you know, threatening, coming around uh, that little baby. And so we felt it was almost confirmation. Yes, please keep on. Please keep fighting this battle. So, Anita, sorry. <laughs> please come. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, hi, my name is Anita. I'm from Pro Life. And um, she's literally said everything. That's it, that is to say. But um, I will probably just maybe target my message to maybe the younger ones. 
because for me it's like where i'm from it's like they say charity begins at home it's like what you've learned train up a child in the way he should go when he grows up he'll never depart from it so if you have this idea from the onset you know this is wrong this is something that probably shouldn't be done you would obviously canvass and talk more about it to your friends you go to school you have friends you talk to you you've heard this how many have heard of this before just okay now you have more information you can talk to your friends about it get your friends on board tell them this is what's happening basically that's what conversation is about advocating for something you're standing for something you're taking a stand and basically to those who don't know what it's about those who are on the fence who haven't decided are the ones like you say we're targeting so we would love for you to talk to your friends about this anybody committing will you talk to your friends Oh, nobody's saying anything. Will you talk to your friends? Tell them about pro-life. Tell them about the work we're doing. Good. Um, I would also want some of you, if you're interested, you could get wristbands to show you're standing for something. If you're taking a stand, if there's anybody who wants the bands. And also, we have some flyers. You can also put this on your cars as well, indicating that you're taking a stand. You're standing with us. You are for us. You're pro-life. So if you're interested, please, I could give out some of these too. Um, is there any, I would probably, anybody has any question? A question. You want one? Oh, okay. For your car. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Thank God. That's great. Any questions? Would anybody have any questions? From the young people, any questions, please? Are you sure? Do you want to have any questions? Ask me. Go ahead and ask. It's fine. She could answer as well. Okay, great. That's fine. So I'm glad everybody's on board with this. Thankful. Very, I enjoyed your service. And I like the fact that the kids were very involved, playing the guitar, playing everything. That's really nice. I had service in church today. Thank you for having us. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. And also, I want to ask you, for those who are interested, they could put down their yes. names, if that's okay by you. Yeah. And I want to say that. Okay. So please, um, we have a list here. If anybody's interested in joining, put on your name, your number, and anything. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Who wants them? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Come on, much. give a clap for the Lord. Hallelujah. For people standing like this. Amen. People filled with the zeal. Amen. Um, do you know what time on March 10th? Uh, Do you know what, March 10th, uh, yeah, yes, what time it is? Okay, we can get the detail, yeah. Okay, so we'll be there. Ministry of Jesus, we are going to join with that rally on March 10th. Amen. <coughs> so we all stand in the presence of God. Especially the school children get that leaflet, get that uh, wristband, you know, uh, uh, that you can show that you are standing for the Lord. Hallelujah. If the evil can be so much bold to spread their evil message, uh, how much more we need to be. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are having the Spirit of God inside of us. We need to be more boldness in Jesus' name. Now we're going to have the worship team to come forward. They're going to lead a song. Um, can I have the worship team to come forward? They're going to lead the song then. Pastor Vikram will come and he will share the word of God. Amen. Children, you can get it after the service even. Yeah. You all are going to get it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Shall we all be in the attitude of Reverend in God, you can, they will be here with us until the service finish. So if anybody have any questions or, uh, you know, whatever they have, the leaflet and everything, can have it in the end of the service. Uh, children, please, parents, take your children, please. They just hold your children. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, okay, let's sing this song. And the song is 
Thy loving kindness is better than life. Amen. Thy loving kindness. ask the Lord to speak to us today what the heaven is keeping for us yes, let that Lord come Jesus. through the servant of God oh, my hallelujah father we thank you we worship you God thank you Jesus as we stand before your throne with God my father that you will use your servant so gloriously thank you for Lord bringing them again into this place with God my father the name that is the name of all name that the anointing of God that flows from heaven above that will take control over him in the name of Jesus Christ. All that you are keeping for us, God, we shall receive it today in Jesus' mighty name. We surrender past Vikram in your hands and the entire congregation in the hand of God, my Father. 
Jesus name we ask this prayer amen amen hallelujah may be seated now amen thank god for the anointing upon his wife uh, for leading us into the song may god bless her more and more amen so pastor vikram is not new to us he was here with us a few months back and we are very delighted and happy that he's and his wife is here in our midst. So shall we put our hands to welcome him, hallelujah, to come and share the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Though we go through so many things in life, but there is one thing that remains in us, that is the joy of the Lord. And that joy gives us strength to continue and not to give up. Amen. Because we are not going to give up. Amen. Because our Lord never gives up on us. Amen. He's always there for us, always there to strengthen us, encourage us, build us up. Amen. And He has promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Doesn't matter what you go through your life, doesn't matter what mistakes you have done in your life. You know, even if we do a mistake, Lord is able to do a miracle. Amen. In Bible we read about uh, Jonah and Lord asked him to go to Nineveh, he started running to Tarshish. That was a big mistake. But what God did, he brought him back. He did a miracle. He was for three days, three nights inside fish. Amen. Jesus was on the cross. He died on the cross. But third day he was raised from the dead. The mistake of man to crucify him. But the plan of God Almighty to save many. But that man's mistake turned into a blessing, into a miracle. Amen. 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 You know, Moses did a mistake by trying to win war with his flesh and he killed the Egyptian. And then he had to run away and he was in wilderness. But one day the Lord Almighty appeared to him in that place. And how God delivered through his hand many millions of people. You know, you may be thinking that, Lord, I have done mistake. I have missed it. Maybe I did something wrong in my past. Maybe I have some, done something bad because of that. I don't think, well, you know, I'll have a good future. Maybe I will missed my prophecy, what I received. Because, you know, after receiving the prophecy, I, I did a mistake. Or I slept with someone. Or I started lying. Or something else I did. You know, many times we think that way. And we think that, you know, we missed it. In Bible, you can read about so many people who missed a mark, you know, who missed in their life. They were called by God, but they, they you know, gave uh, place to sin in their life. Even about David, you can see that how he slept with wife of Uriah. And uh, then he lost his son. But then you see Solomon came later on. And you uh, know how Lord was merciful to him and how because he kept on loving God, God turned his mistake for his good. Amen. That's who our God is. Our God is a good God. Can you say my God is a good God? My God is a good God. So that means we all have hope. You know, I have gone through time in my life when I got saved near 2002. I was working in the UK and then Lord asked me to go back to India. So I was living in a city called Amrissa. And I knew that this is where God wants me. And, uh, but because of uh, tremendous pressure and the problems I faced and so many good cases started and, you know, there was life threat. So I had to run to another city. But somehow I knew that I should remain in this city. I should not run away. And I tell you, I ran away. And for three, four years, I was thinking, Lord, I did a mistake. I should not have given up. I should not have gone away from that place. Maybe, you, you know, uh, you spoke to me that miracles will happen in this city. Now that will never come to pass because I missed it somewhere. But God is such a good God, even though I ran away from that place and I was in other uh, city, God opened doors for me. You know, how many of you use navigation? You know, most of you use navigation. And how many of you miss a turn? When navigation says turn left and somehow you cross it, we say, oh, you know, I lost it. I should have turned left. How many of you done that? You know, we all do that mistake when we uh, miss a road turning on the right or left. But what will the navigation say that? Navigation will never say, oh, I give up. I'm not going to help you anymore. Because you people don't listen to me. You know, that lady speaking on that, you know. He never says that, 
you know, you don't listen to me, so I'm going to go quiet. You know, what will the navigation say? Recalculating. Recalculating. And then the second turn will come and navigation will say, now that lady speaking will say, turn left. And we'll miss that also. So what will that lady say? Oh, you are such a messy people. You know, you don't want to listen to me. So I'm go not going to help you. No. After a few minutes, again say, you know, a few seconds, recalculating. Recalculating. You know, always there to help us. Always has a way somehow so that we can reach our destination. That same with our God. Even if you have missed in your life, God has a plan for you. Amen. You know, if you do, even if you don't see any road and you'll say, oh, there is no road. God know, knows how to make a new way for you. God knows how to make a road for you because he will never give up on you. He's such a faithful God. Doesn't matter how much you have messed up in your life. God is still, He knows how to take you towards your destiny. Amen. Amen. You know, from the book of Genesis till Revelation, you can read people who messed up in their life. You know, you read about Adam. He lost up the hope, but even then, God had a plan for him and how God sacrificed the animal, covered him and, and made so many promises with him. So, so many people we see messed up. Uh, Jacob, he messed up. And he tried to, you know, win a blessing, you know, lying with his father. But Lord turned that to for good and he had to run away from his uh, house, leave his father's house. And he was uh, living uh, with his uncle Laban and, and he faced few challenges there. But God gave him a family there. God blessed him there. Even though he did mistake, but because he kept on trusting God, walking with God, God made a way for him. Amen. Amen. So I, do, I want you to uh, reject everything that is holding you and the guilt that you are holding in your life. That Lord, I have made mistake. I know because of that, I have to go through hardships. Maybe I missed my prophecy. Maybe now you will not uh, you know, use me. Because last time when some preacher came, he, he prayed over me, he prophesied over me, he blessed me. But after that, I sinned after a few days. I think I lost all my anointing and call. You know, God never takes call away from your life calling and gift of god are irrevocable it without repentance god will never take call away from you amen that's why bible says in that day many will come in my name did i not cast out demons in your name did not i prophesied and lord will say i never knew that means the gift was still there that means the call was still there. God never took it. But yeah, it's our responsibility to come back to God and repent. Lord, I'm sorry. I thank you. You are such a loving God that you never give up on us. Amen. Amen. Even though we miss sometimes in our life. But you will say, recalculating. Recalculating. Making a new way for you. Because I will never give up on you. You know, if you can turn your Bibles to Ephesians and uh, chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, and we'll just read few verses. And verse 12, just verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, Against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. Against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. So Bible is talking about that we all are in a warfare. If you are a Christian, you are in a warfare. If you are not a Christian, you are already under the slavery of devil. You know, for them, they don't feel any warfare because they're already there, slaves. But once we give our life to the Lord, we realize that there is a war. Our flesh is trying to take us, you know, and uh, take hold of our life and, you know, into wrong things. And the Spirit is saying, don't do that. That's when the real war starts. And, and Bible is talking about that we are in a warfare not against any man, but against spiritual forces. Amen. 
in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, there you see that Bible says that God made man in his own image and own likeness. And then God gave man authority, dominion. And after that God blessed the man and then he asked him to work. And Bible says all things that God created, he put into man's hand. All the earth, everything on the earth, every animal. God said you take authority, dominion. Psalm says, Psalm says, heaven belongs to God, earth he has given to man. You know many times we ask question God, God why this nation is like that? Why people are turning away from you? Why wrong things are happening? Why that eighth amendment we heard about? Why this is happening? You know, why that happens? Because we don't arise. Because we think that, you know, you know, God knows God is doing everything. He's in control over everything. No. He has given earth to man. And when God made Adam, what he did? He gave him dominion. He said, you take care of this physical world. To take control over this physical world, God had to give Adam a body. And that's why Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 says, Then God made man, means man's body, out of the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into his nostrils, spirit of life. Where did God create man? He created man inside him. It's like in a woman, a pregnant woman has baby, and the baby is formed inside the woman. Not once it comes out. It happens when the baby is inside. So when God created man, he created man inside himself. And then God made body out of dust. And he said, Adam, live in this body. I give you this body. And now take control over this physical world. Amen. Amen. So God to take control over this physical world, he used Adam. He gave him a body. He gave that spirit man made in his likeness. A body so that he can live in that body and he can rule, take dominion, take kingship, take authority so that everything that happens on the earth will happen according to the will of God. Amen. But Bible says Adam sinned against God and he was able to deceive Eve and now Adam was more in love with his wife than God and he hurt his wife and he listened to his wife and you know disobeyed God and he also ate from the tree. And now many people say, oh, I messed up, I messed up. Oh, woman messed up. You know, I, I heard from someone and saying that, oh, woman, because of woman, it's because of woman. You know, I've heard certain people say, hey, Adam was also there standing alongside. It was his responsibility to teach his wife. And the same woman who messed up, you know, God gave a prophecy in Genesis chapter 3. Through the seed of this woman. So, Devil, you use the woman, I am going to use the woman to crush your head. Amen. 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 If you think that, you know, somehow uh, you have been like a puppet, a puppet in the hands of a uh, devil and he has used you in the past, I tell you, now as you give your life to God, God is going to use you and he's going to crush the head of the devil. Amen. 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 That is the plan of God for your life. Amen. That is how he turns everything around. I was such a mess up boy, messed up boy. You know, when I was young, did so many mistakes in my life and, and people, uh, neighbors nearby, you know, they will ask their children, don't sit with him, don't fellowship with him. So I was that type of, you know, guy. But when once the God started came in me, he came in me, he started using in me for his glory so that now, you know, I can bring people into the kingdom of God. That same with every one of you. He wants to use you. He wants to work through your life. Allow Holy Spirit to use you. Don't sit quietly. It's our responsibility. The first thing that happened to me when I got saved. And as I went to one church. Uh, you know I got saved on Monday. That was a Monday. And before that Monday. Two weeks before that I went to one church. It was Scottish church in Scotland. And there I was somehow arguing with people after the meeting. No, you know, I was talking about my religion. They, was to they were talking about life-giving Christ. You know, so there was a lot of argument. And now after I got saved on Monday after two weeks. And then I went back to that church on Sunday to share what happened in my life. And by that time, I left my job. It, you know, because Lord said, leave your job. So fifth day, I left my job. So I left my job on Friday. And then Sunday, I went back to... Uh, 
uh, that church. So they didn't wanted me to share testimony because they think, hey, two weeks back this guy was saying something else and now he's saying, coming and saying, you know, uh, I want to share something. So I wanted to share that I was a sinner, Jesus saved me. But as they gave me the mic later on, and I started saying, church, we have to do something. People are dying without Christ. World is going into death. And if we don't rise up, then who will? I said, I can feel the heartbeat of God. God is grieved because of what is happening in this world. Amen. So God made man. He gave him a body so that he can rule this physical world and apply the heart of God, the word of God in this world. So it's like extension of heaven. You know, that's how it was. So beautiful in the beginning. No death. You know, no animals fighting with each other. No one killing each other. No killing babies. No killing animal. Yeah, no, no killing of... You know, brother killing brother, and you know, Cain killed Abel. You know, there was no killing. The killing came because man allowed sin in their life, and then devil came, who was waiting for an opportunity to somehow enter the body of man. Where to enter? The body of man. Because these spiritual forces cannot do anything unless until they get a body. God cannot do anything. It's not that he cannot, but he will not do because that will break his principle. So that will be illegal for God. So to rule over this physical world, God needs a body. That's why he took on body when Christ Jesus came. So that now he can die for man. So that he can heal the sick. So Every time you read in the Bible, even if it has to do with some prophetic word, even if it has to do with healings, even if it has to do with uh, rescuing a nation or saving a nation, God always used man. And even used donkey. Because he needs something physical. Same with the devil. He wants body. He wants someone who is arrogant. He wants someone who is saying there is no God. He wants someone who is living in sin. And he always looked for an opportunity, which body can I enter? You know, one day Jesus went to a man who had a legion inside him. And those demon spirits spoke through him. You know, allow us to go into pigs. Because we don't want to st our work to stop. We want a body. So, if you want us to cast us out from this man, send us into the pig's body. At least we'll start hurting people every day. Now, do something that will trouble people. Because to trouble man, to trouble this world, he needs a body, a physical body. Because without that body, he cannot do anything. In Bible, there are a few verses I just want to take you through. It's in the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13, and then we'll read from 18 to 20. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for sexual immorality. But for the Lord and the Lord for the body. So body is not meant for sexual immorality. But for the Lord. So that means this body is not to commit sin. Not to commit sexual sins, immorality. This body is for the Lord. Amen. Amen. This body is for the Lord. Your body belongs to God. Jesus has paid a price for you. Then verse 18 it says, flee from sexual immorality. Flee. Why? Because if we allow sin in our life, that is like giving a foothold to devil. In one area of our life. And then he will start using our life. To spoil other people. Because. Spirit of lust will enter. And then we want to commit adultery. Or do something wrong. And then we will make a reason for other persons falling. You read in Bible. In the book of Genesis. The life of Joseph. That how his master's wife wanted to sleep with him. But he didn't give any foothold. And Bible says, 
he flee from that place that's what devil was looking for opportunity so that he can destroy the future of joseph completely completely because somehow you know devil knows devil knows you know sometimes it take a, takes us time to know that god has a plan for me but devil knows when jesus was born how many babies were murdered how many babies were killed when moses was born how many pregnant women and the right away when the baby was born they were killed even in so many warfares you read in the bible you know they will kill uh, uh, the pregnant woman and the baby inside them because devil is a murderer he wants to kill people he doesn't want new generation to arise and he is afraid of this end time generation because the babies who are coming you know you can see how many children they were they you know uh, they are leading us in worship and playing instruments so beautiful to see that he is afraid of this generation amen tell your neighbor the devil is afraid of you so bible is saying flee from sexual immorality even other sin a person commit in is outside the body but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body do you not know that your body is a temple of holy spirit do you not know that your body is a temple of god and god's temple is holy everyone say god's temple is holy Everyone say, my body, my body is the temple of Holy Spirit. Of Holy Spirit. And this temple is holy. This temple is holy. Amen. 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 Do you not know that your body is a temple of Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You are not your own. You know, there was a very famous song. Uh, many years back before i got saved i liked that song you know before i got saved it's my life you know you know it's my life i know I, whatever i want to do i'll do and me and my friend driving in a car it's my life and sometimes drinking alcohol it's my life but that time i gave my life to the devil only when i got saved and some demons came out from me then i understood it was not my life i gave him to him amen, amen. but now my life belongs to jesus amen. your life belongs to jesus amen. it's your no it's not your life is the life of jesus amen. because paul said i have been crucified with christ it's no longer i who live but it's christ who lives in me and the life that now i live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god so that means it's not your life it's the life of christ <laughs> it's powerful it's the life of christ is jesus in me when you are walking maybe people are seeing here your out, outer appearance but these spirits they recognize jesus you know when you walk the spirit will say these spirits say Oh, see Jesus is walking. Yeah, they see Jesus. That's why when the apostles of Jesus, disciple of Jesus, casting out demons and demons started coming out of them. Why they obeyed them? Why? Because it was not them who were commanding them to come out. It was Jesus living inside them. You know, around in year two thousand two, Benny Hinn came to India. It was a big crusade in Mumbai. around 45 uh 4.5 million people attended that uh, crusade for 3 days and i i was there and i and on the i think it was on the second or third day some police officers came on the stage he called them uh, on the stage and holy spirit touched them they were falling under the presence of god police man on duty and then one big officer came and he came and saluted banihin on the stage like this and the, there was one elderly pastor with me he said do you know whom he is saluting i said whom he said he is saluting jesus inside banihin jesus is getting honor jesus is getting glory amen amen, amen. so these spirits they recognize christ in you they know you have jesus living in you they are afraid of you devil is afraid of you 
And but some people, because of lack of knowledge, they don't know the word of God, they don't know the truth, they don't know who they are in Christ. You know, we are kind of trying to, we are afraid, we are so afraid. We are so afraid of devil. We are afraid that we will fall. We are afraid that we will sin because we don't understand that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. The righteousness in you is more powerful than the sin outside. Amen. Amen. The righteousness in you is more powerful than the sin outside. So you do not have to be afraid. You can just laugh at sins. Hey, not me. Because I am the righteous child of God. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. That means God reveals His righteousness through me. I am the righteousness of God. What that, does that mean? God reveals His righteousness through me. God reveals Himself through me. There is a beautiful verse in the Bible where it's written, As He is, so are we in this world. As He is. Oh Lord, you know, I'm such an ugly person. You know, I've done so many mistakes in the past. I know you have all the countings. He said, no, I blotted out your sins. I, I remember them no more. It's not only you who is trying to think, oh, five years back, I messed up and because of that, I don't think I'll have a future. No, you have a future. Because God will say, recalculating. Recalculating. He's such a faithful God, He will take you to your final destiny. He will help, help you to fulfill your vision. You know, one night, Joseph saw a dream and in that dream, the Lord spoke to him and that one day, you know, you will rise high. And, and not the whole story, he knew something, God wants me to, to lift me high. But after that, how much, prob how many problems he went through. His brothers became his enemies. They wanted to kill him, sold as a slave, in prison because of false allegation. But see how God in his faithfulness said, recalculating. 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 Amen. Because before anything happens, before you ma make any mistake, God has already made a new route. He knows how to take you there. Before Adam sinned, he knew that he's going to sin. That's why Christ was crucified before the foundations of the world. It was already done. Before he created the creation, he saw Christ already crucified. Amen. Amen. So he knows your beginning and he knows your end because he is the beginning and the end. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 Maybe you don't know what's going to happen next year. You don't know what's happen going to happen tomorrow. You don't know the right things you are do going to do and the wrong mistakes or maybe wrong decisions you will take. But he knows all about that. And he'll teach you and he wants you to be careful. But even if you mess up, if you come back to him, he'll say, recalculating, turn left, turn right, start again, don't give up. You have a future, you have a life, you have hope because I am still alive. Amen. Because we serve a living God. Amen. Our God is not dead that once he said something and now he's died. So he cannot say anything new. No, he still speaks. Amen. Still alive. Jesus was raised from the dead. Death couldn't hold him. Amen. So he's victorious. So Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we. Exactly the same. No difference. No difference. In your spirit, you are completely now made in the image of God. Amen. No sin, no evil, 100% pure. Fullness of God dwells in you. Amen. You know, some people say, Lord, uh, I'm, I have a half Holy Spirit. Give me full. It's not like half piece came inside and half. It's not like that. As a person, He fully comes in you. He lives in you. He abides in you. And He is there for you. He strengthens you. And the more you realize that He is in you and working with you and for you, the more you will live in victory. Amen. Amen. Because that's, that will change everything. That will change the way you look at things. That will 
change the way you look at challenges in your life, the problems you face, the storms that hit your life and that will change every, everything. Because then you will start from eagles. You know, when eagles see storms, they are not afraid. They'll say, it's time to go high. Every time problem hits my life, I tell devil one thing. I'm going to go, I'm going to fly high. Amen. I'm going to fly high. Can you shout, say, I'm going to fly high. Because my God is with me. So as I was saying, our body is the temple of Holy Spirit. In spirit, we are completely, 100% like Jesus. Spirit of sonship we have received. We are the sons of God, children of God. When we pray in Jesus' name, it's like not us asking the Father, it's Jesus asking. In Jesus' name I come, it's Jesus asking from inside us. That's why the Bible says, walk according to the Spirit. Live life according to the Spirit, according to Christ who lives in you. The one who was loving, the one who was faithful, the one who was holy. The one who was forgiving. Live like him. Because that's who you are now. God has given us a new image. The image that was lost is restored now in Christ Jesus. Amen. Bible says, Christ live in us. And Bible also says, we live in Christ. What does that mean? Christ in us and we in Christ. What does it mean? Lord, you live in me, I live in you. What does this mean? On earth, on earth, Jesus lives in us. Because he wants to use this body for his glory. To deliver people. To set people free. But in heaven, we are in him. That's why Bible says, we are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Where are, where are we seated with? With Christ Jesus. Where? In Him. In Him. So, you know, in the book of Daniel, you read about uh, Daniel fasted for 21 days. And then there was a warfare in the heavenlies. And these principalities and powers, they said, no, no, we are not going to allow Daniel to get the answer. Well, stop Gabriel. And then Michael came, Michael came, and he helped Gabriel. And Satan was defeated. So many Christians, even nowadays, they think the same way. Oh, there is a warfare. Oh, 21 days, no answer. Let's 40 days. 40 days, no answer. 80 days. 80 days, no 100 days. Because there is a warfare. Where are you, Michael? Are you sleeping? In the Old Testament, people fell from the grace of God. Because Bible says, He made man little lower than? That's what King James Version says. Because the translators were a little bit shocked. But the real translation is, He made us little lower than Himself. Himself. NASB, New Living Translation. Many other versions say that. King James Version says, ESV says, little lower than angels. But the real translation is, little lower than himself. We were far above all the angels. That's who we were during the creation. Adam was far above all the angels. But he lost his position when he gave, allowed sin, devil in his life. And devil took away that position, snatched it from him, and he became the ruler over this world so that whatever he desires to do will happen. If he wants to kill babies, he'll say, okay, I'll make sure babies are killed. If he wants to allow sin and prostitution and adultery and all that, he'll say, oh, I'll make sure that happens. Because I have snatched it away from man. But thanks be to Christ Jesus, he restored that position back. Amen. In the Old Testament, we were even uh, below the angels. Before giving a life to Christ, we fell. We were down. We are on the dust now. We lost authority and dominion that God gave us. That's why there was no power in our prayers. There was no power. I wish if the world will change. I wish. We were just wishing. Because there was no authority, no dominion, no power. We gave it to the devil. 
That's why so many religions started and so many caste systems started and so many, you know, in the beginning, when God made man, there was no country. Yeah, no country, no borders, no military, and even the language was same. Till Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. One language, one country, no need for army. Because army is to fight with other nations. Yeah, police is to protect people inside, keep the discipline. There was no army, there was no need for missiles. You don't need missiles to control your citizen. You don't need some heavy ammunition to control your citizens. This all was to fight with other nations. Because when man divided... And how Satan started ruling and divided man from each other, bringing religion, bringing borders, bringing selfishness, bringing evil, whatever he wanted to do. But thanks be to Christ Jesus, that through Christ Jesus, now we have united back. Amen. Amen. United back to that life-giving tree, the Christ Jesus, so that body of Christ can once again come back and be united. You are from different nation, I am from different nation. But now we are same, we are equal. We are the children of God. We have the same father. Maybe the passports are dividing us. But heaven recognizes us as one. Amen. Amen. That's our true identity we have in Christ Jesus. So devil uses body to do his things. So that's why he keeps on sometimes knocking our heart. Hey, you want to sin? You want to drink? You want to sleep? Why? All he wants to do is somehow to enter. Enter. Corrupt. Our soul. Not the spirit. Our soul. Corrupt it. Bring corruption. So that we will give up to our body and start fulfilling the desires of the flesh. In Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, and I will we'll read from verse 43 to 45. 43, 12, verse 43 to 45. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. When unclean spirit has gone out of a person, when a spirit is casted out from a person, uh, that spirit is restless. Bible says, the spirit of God rested upon believers when the Holy Spirit came, rested upon them. This is, God says, this is where I belong. Because when God made body, he said, not only Adam made in my image will live in it, I will live along with him. So the body is not just for our soul or for us. It's for God as well. So, so when the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places, deserted places, or seeking rest. Rest. The demons are restless once they, you have cast them out from someone. Once you give your life to Jesus and in some area of your life, maybe, you know, devil had some excess. Now it's delivered, it's gone. Now it's restless. Because it needs body to do its work. This place is seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house. What it says? I will return to my house. Bible says our body is the temple of Holy Spirit. That's the truth. But the lie is, devil says, I will return to my house. My house. Some people say, I think there are some demons living in my house. They're not that house. They want this house. Because if they're just living in a room without a body, they cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. They cannot bring wrong laws, corruptible laws in the land. You know, so they need body. To do their work and they are restless if they are just in the room they we want to enter a body that's where they rest that's their resting place then it says i've returned to my house from which i came that means they remember where they came out from that's why people who were struggling with 
adultery or you know some lust and now they came to Jesus and after some time they are not careful they struggle with same things why because that same demon comes back same demon not gone anywhere far don't not gone to you know heavenly places so that's another tropic because these demons are earthbound they don't go back to heavenly places that's a uh, other spirits the fallen angels but here it says you know they are just on this earth very restless and they say let us go back then it says i will return to my house from which i came and when it comes it finds the house empty what does that mean that means no word of god some people who get delivered and and then they don't come to church they don't read their bible they don't spend time with god they don't fill themselves with the word of god they are empty so it's important for us when we receive healing we receive deliverance and even if we don't have any demon anymore but keep filling yourself with the word of god because that gives you strength amen, amen. amen. so we need the word of god we, our spirit needs that food that is the word of god the life giving word then it says i will return to my house from which i came and when it comes it finds the house empty swept and put in order it's like saying welcome demon spirit you know it's like it's, it's like saying that yeah look see i'm back in that same old sin same old lifestyle same old pornography same old mobile phone same old photos same old videos same old drinking same old friend look see the house is set in order for you in the old testament you see how moses god commanded moses to make a tabernacle and everything was very orderly you know this much long this much tall this color that color gold silver bronze and same way some people you know they order their life for demons entries because when we are living in sin no word no word inside and cleaned get ready put in order like means going back to the same old sin same old lifestyle it finds the house empty swept and put in order then it goes and bring goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself more evil seven more maybe the first one was if you just see a physical just to give you understanding maybe the first one was like a small baby or some eight years old small slim and i said no 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 i'll bring seven more i'll bring my i'll go to gym and i'll bring some <laughs> other brothers of mine <laughs> some big ones who are bigger than me and will make sure that now no one will be able to cast us away cast us out from that body so we'll make that person's life worse than before that's the danger that's the danger and i've seen some people like that they walked with god received holy spirit but they were arrogant not careful they sinned okay god gave them opportunity to repent but they kept on sinning and what they did they allowed the enemy because one day a demon came back just to have a look oh it's back in order okay i'm going to enter oh no 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 now i have to be wise hey seven brothers come we all will go in this person and that's what happened with people and then they will make sure that people don't come back to church they don't fellowship you know he doesn't mind us watching uh, videos on youtube and facebook you know because in that way we'll just getting pickle but when we come and fellowship fellowship is coming together as a body to worship the lord that's why bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name there am i in the midst of them it's not saying where youtube and you are present i am there of course god is everywhere but there is something special when body of christ come together yes. as a church yes. amen 
So if you are someone sitting at home, oh, I don't, I want to sit at home morning till night. I'll just watch, listen to some message. That's all. You will not become fruitful. Because only when you become a part of a church, that's when you get an opportunity to serve the Lord. That's where you receive something, you know. Because many people have a desire to serve the Lord, but they don't know how. When you come to the church, you know what. Maybe someone will say, oh, I can help in worship. Maybe I can you know, help in something else. I can help in cleaning. I can go out and preach gospel to others. I can bring people to church. I can use my car and bringing those people to church who don't have a car. Amen. That's where you are able to fulfill the purpose of God. You will never be able to fulfill the purpose of God if you are not part of a fellowship. Because I have met some people, they say, no, I don't like to go to church. Why? Because yeah, they are not perfect people. Our God is perfect. Spirit in Christ is perfect. We all are growing. So are you. We all are growing in our soul, in our mind. It has to be renewed, changed. It needs all, it needs all the information. Amen. It's changing, going from glory to glory. Yeah, we do mistakes. But again, we arise. Because our God doesn't give up on us. But if we are just sitting at home, how can we grow? How will we know our faults? Because, you know, uh, one of our leader, uh, one day he was sharing, he said, when I was unmarried I did some marriage counseling he said, he said hey, these married people they don't understand it's so easy look read the word of God <laughs> wives honor your husband husband love your wife it's so easy I don't know why can't they understand but only when he after when he got married <laughs> then he was fasting and praying God please help me to love my wife <laughs> Only when you become a part of a fellowship and you start living together, that's where you start building up. That's where you can see who you are and the areas that you need to develop. Because Bible says, iron sharpens iron. Amen. 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 Sitting at home in one corner of your house will do nothing. But you have to go and fellowship. You have to meet people who are perfect in their spirit but developing in their soul. Yes. Be with them, love them, learn to forgive. Learn to, it's easy to say, oh Lord, I've forgiven everyone. Yeah, okay, come in fellowship. There will be people, they'll hello to you definitely. But thank God for those people. Because they teach you to love. They teach you to forgive. Because if there is no one to test us, how will we know who we are, how strong we are? And God does test us. He does test us. Why? It's not because He doesn't know who we are. Just to show us who we are. Because we are thinking, sitting at home, Oh Lord, I am the best Christian. There is no one like me. These church people fighting all the time. Me and you in a room alone. <laughs> yeah, that's the song people sing. They don't want to go to fellowship. Because devil doesn't want them to. Because devil knows, once they become a part of a fellowship, they will start growing. We don't teach our children at home. We don't say, okay, here is the book, you read. We send them school, to school. They learn practical things. They learn how to uh, have friends. They learn how to cooperate. They learn how to do teamwork. You know, they learn so many things. You can't learn everything. So then there is no need for schools. There is no need for teachers. Some people say, no, Holy Spirit teaches me. Yes, He is there to teach and confirm what the man of God is saying is right, receive it. That's the work of Holy Spirit. To give us an understanding of the word of God because without Holy Spirit, I may be preaching, but you will not be able to see the heart of God inside it. Because only the revelation will transform your life. Many people have information, but they don't have any revelation. Because information will say that you do this and will say, yeah, it needs to be done, but we'll see when I get time. But revelation, when you get a revelation, you say, Lord, I'm even willing to give up my life to fulfill you what you asked me to do. Amen. Many people have information that if people die, they are going to hell. They will do nothing about it. They just have the information. They are 
they have so much of knowledge without any revelation they will not move even a single hand even a single uh, step they will not take in their life they have you know oh yeah everyone should be saved yeah people are going to hell but once you get the revelation you will be unstoppable you will say even if herod is waiting to kill me even if a roman empire is waiting to kill me even if there are people who want to hang me even if there are people who want to crucify me i will still go Amen. because of revelation the people with information they are convenient people they'll say i'll see i will see when i get time i have other things to fulfill i have my own ishmaels to take care of i have my own isaac to take care of and god is saying go and i sacrifice your isaac and do what i say and when you have a revelation you will not stop i won't tell you only once before i came into i was serving the lord in ministry before i started leading a ministry or a churches only once we missed a sunday service and we cried that day lord please forgive us because we felt that something should have gone there you know it was it became a part of our life only once and that also we were upset with the pastor and then i said lord sorry he's our pastor please forgive us you kept us there you know will you leave your father's house if you get upset with him will you leave your mother if you get upset with her how oh, why i wanted my mom to do this she didn't cook uh, you know this nice some cheese curry or whatever for me i am not going to stay in this house you know you just stay you just hang on even the house is not perfect you just hang on because you know this is your family this is where god kept you this is where god has placed you to serve and be faithful and fellowship and rejoice and learn from each other and get sharpened amen, amen. so here we just read that you know they, the the demon spirit will say okay we'll go back to into this body i'll go back and take seven more wicked spirits than me and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that person is worse than the first so also will be with this evil generation so bible god is warning us he's saying don't allow sin in your life don't give the enemy any foothold you know he tried to enter the body of jesus in matthew chapter 4 he came tempting him that somehow he will listen to him and jesus will become his slave that like adam became devil's slave <coughs> that's what he tried he gave him no room no room and that's why jesus said the the god of this world is coming huh? the ruler of this world is coming but he has nothing in me nothing of devil i have nothing in my life that belongs to devil he cannot claim oh you have hatred in you oh you have bitterness in you those days you know your people village people they were going to stone you no no he forgave them completely they were going to throw him down from the cliff he just forgave them nothing because if you keep things of devil in your life they will corrupt you and it will spread like poison in your life so jesus was very careful someone said something to him forgiven on the cross someone said something to him he was quiet father forgive them they don't know what they are doing nothing of devil and i ask want to ask you in the end check your lives do you have anything in your life that is from the devil and you may be thinking oh it's just a small thing it's just a small sin it's just a small you know yeah just some bitterness this and that and unforgiveness no don't give devil any foothold your body is the temple of holy spirit allow holy spirit to lead your life and take you to places take you to people you have never thought about he will lead you in his ways you know what is real success some people think real success is buying three houses paying all the debt 
whatever needs to be paid. No, all the loans covered, all right, I'm successful. Some people think if I buy a DM BMW, I'm a successful person. If I am wearing uh, some 10,000 uh, pound suit and driving a Rolls Royce, look, see, I'm a successful man. With two big companies, that's not success. Success is finishing what God gave you. Even though you become a millionaire or billionaire, but you have not done what God gave you. You are unsuccessful. Paul said, I have finished my race. He was not a billionaire when he died. He had no Mercedes, no BMW, no Rolls Royce, no big houses. All he had was beatings and lashes and the marks on his body. He said, this is what I have. Look at my back, look at my body. I have marks of Jesus on my body. This is all I have. Pain. Persecution. Hardships. I was beaten in the sea. So many times felt going to die. Stoned. Jesus was beaten once, I was beaten five times. He said, this is all I have. But I finished it. Yes. You know, some people think, that, you know, happy ending like a movie, you know. Most of the Indian movies, if I don't know about, you know, most of the Indian movies have happy endings. They'll come out, yeah, happy, successful. Now at last he's millionaire, <laughs> yeah, happy ending. At last he got his girlfriend and now they are married. Happy ending. At last the villain has died. Happy ending. Maybe who will die. But God will say, you finished it. You finished it. You did what I gave you. Stephen died. Paul died. Beheaded. Peter died. They finished it. Happy ending. Not in the eyes of man. People may be crying. Oh, oh Lord, they killed them. But in heaven they was rejoicing. Just let me tell you one last story. Few years back, one man of God from India, very famous man of God, he passed away. And one other pastor in another city, uh, he was praying. And, and many times while praying, you know, Lord took him to heaven, showed him in his spirit. Like Paul had that experience. John in the Revelation had the experience when the Spirit of God said, Come up higher! So, that night while praying, in his spirit he was just lifted high. And he went to heaven and he saw the atmosphere was really different that day. He said, I feel more rejoicing. There is so much of joy. Why is that? And he asked one angel standing there. He said, why? It's so different today. It's, it's, it's so rejoicing. It's like some, some big party going on. He said, don't you know? The man of God has arrived heaven. Hallelujah. Successfully. Amen. Not just reaching out. Oh, thank God as last I reached. Oh, thank you for rescuing me from hell. You know, some people will just like that. They will just make it. Yeah, God is loving God. He said, well, welcome my son. But inside that person will know, Lord, I didn't fulfill what you gave me. I, will, I didn't fulfill. That will be the, I think, maybe, I don't know how in heaven it will be like. I don't want to use the word painful, but I don't know. <coughs> but that day, maybe some realization that I could have done much more, much more. I have finished what God gave me. If I would not have allowed that sin in my life, if that day I would have repented, if that day I would have come out of that wrong relationship that was leading me into fornication, I could have. So we don't want that day. We want to be successful. We want to finish what God gave us. Can you all arise on your feet? I want worship team to come forward. Hallelujah. 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 Just worship the Lord. Just start thanking Him. Because God is here in this place. God is here. I know God has spoken to you. 
I know God is doing something in your life. I know this is a day of deliverance. This is a day of deliverance. I know the demon has to leave. I know sin has to leave. I know evil has to leave. I know darkness has to leave. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Just worship the Lord. Just thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. High praises to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, honor you. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you. You're merciful. You're mighty. You're mighty, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing a new thing in my life, Lord. Thank you that I am the temple of Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God lives in me. The Spirit of God lives in me. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. My past is gone. My God is faithful. I have a wonderful, glorious future. Lord, here is my life. Just surrender your lives in the hand of Jesus. Lord, use me. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Rabba Saka Rabba Sore. Oh, we worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just sing some song. Just worship Him. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is doing something in this place. Holy Spirit is here. God is touching your lives. You are going to bear much fruit. You are going to bear much fruit. You are going to bear much fruit. Oh, Lord is imparting His heart in your lives. His heart, His heart. Lord, give them understanding so that they will hear your heartbeat. They will hear your heartbeat. Oh, Jesus, we worship you. They will hear your heartbeat, Lord. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Jesus. Worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you for open heavens. Thank you for open heavens. And the heavens open up. My Lord poured out His Spirit. We worship. Pour out Your Spirit, Jesus, on my life, over my life.